Okay, and here is SOL topic number three, factors and roots. Let's look at some important factoring patterns. First, starting with the greatest common factor, or GCF. When we're factoring, we should always look for the GCF first. The GCF might be a number, or it might be a variable, or it might be the combination of a number and some variables. It's a unique way of factoring because we pull out a monomial, and we're left with one set of parentheses that has the factors that would remain. The other three special patterns are all binomials, the difference of two perfect squares, the difference of two perfect cubes, and the sum of two perfect cubes. And it's important for you to recognize the signs for each of these patterns. The difference of two perfect squares, we take square roots and we use a plus sign and a minus sign. For the sum of cubes and difference of cubes, I like to remember SOAP, S-O-A-P. And what that stands for, the S stands for same, the same sign, because we use the same sign as the expression for this first sign. And the O stands for opposite, because we will use the opposite sign for the second sign. And the AP stands for always positive because that last sign in the pattern will always be positive. So SOAP, the first sign is the same as the problem, the second sign is the opposite, and the last sign is always positive. If you forget how to factor, it's okay because Desmos will be able to help us. We're gonna use Desmos to graph our expressions and find the factors that way. Now when we do this, we have to make sure that we use X as our variable. And also remember that the graph will only give us the zeros and we'll have to convert them into factors. So let's look at that, the relationship between a solution, a root, a zero, and x-intercept. Remember all four of these mean the same thing. And see the relationship between those and what a factor is. So let's say we have x equals three and that's a solution. Well, the number three is the solution. The number three is a root. The number three is a zero. The ordered pair three comma zero is our x-intercept, but x minus three is our factor. Notice that the factor uses the opposite operation. If you have a positive root, you will have a minus sign in your factor. Another example, let's say x equals negative one-seventh, and that's a solution. Well, then the factor will be 7x plus 1. Notice the opposite operation. Because we had a negative solution, we'll have a positive sign in our factor. And also notice that the denominator of our fraction is the coefficient of the x. Here's the denominator of our root, and that's the coefficient of our x. Two other notes, the degree, that's the greatest exponent, is how many total zeros will exist. And if you have any real zeros, you will always find those at the x-intercepts. So let's take a look at our first example. Number one says to factor completely, 25a squared minus four. Now, if you already recognize this is a difference of two perfect squares, you can probably already see the answer. But if you're not sure, or if you want to double check, let's see what the Desmos calculator can do. Now, before we do that, remember, we cannot plug in this to the Desmos calculator. We need to use the variable x. So I'm going to maybe change that a to an x. And now let's pull up the Desmos calculator. If you don't have it yet, please pause the video until you do. And what we're going to do is we're going to type in this expression and see what happens. So 25x, I'm going to do the caret for the squared, and minus 4. So I can see my graph. I might zoom in a little bit. Oop, that's zooming out. I might zoom in a little bit and see the graph. I'm very interested in the x-intercepts because those will help me find my zeros. Unfortunately, these x-intercepts are decimals, and I don't see any decimals over here, but that's okay. What we can do is type in each of these answer choices until we get the same exact graph. So I'm gonna come over here and I'm just gonna try answer choice A, parentheses, five x uh, minus two, parentheses, and I'll raise that to the second power. And I'm not looking at the same graph. So I know that that's not an answer choice. Let's change it to B. Change the minus sign to a plus sign. And I'm still not looking at the same graph. 
So that's not the correct answer. Let's try answer choice C, 5a plus 2, 5a minus 2. So let's get rid of this squared. And let's put another parenthesis, 5x minus 2. And it looks like I'm looking at the same thing. And I can tell because if I turn this off, I've got my original. And then if I turn it on, I'm looking at the same exact thing. So we do have our answer choice. It definitely was not A, so we put a red, big red X through there. It definitely wasn't B. We have answer choice C is our correct answer. Okay, and let's look at our second example. It says to factor this polynomial, x cubed minus 5x squared plus 6x. And we have six possible factors, and we're supposed to drag the ones that are factors into this box. Well, Desmos is pretty powerful to help us factor this one as well, so let's pull that up. I'm going to clear out the things from the previous example. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in this polynomial. So I've got x cubed minus 5x squared. plus 6x. I'm going to make sure that I got that correct, and there it is. I don't see much of the graph, so I'm going to hit the home button and see what I, oh, there it is. Okay, so I've got this nice cubic, and it hits the x-axis in three different locations. So there will be three factors. Remember, if you have the root, we can get the factor by saying x minus that number. So if 0, 0 is one of my x-intercepts, x minus 0 is one of my factors. And what's another one? It says 2, 0. If that's one of my x-intercepts, then x minus 2 will be one of my factors. And the last one, it says 3, 0. So x minus 3 will be one of my factors. Now, if you forget that, or if you really want to make sure that you're correct, you can just type in the factor, and it will intersect through the correct 0. So if x minus 2 is one of them, I'm going to type x minus 2, and now we know for sure that this is one of our factors because it crosses right through that one of those roots. And what do we, we said x was one of them, so let's type in the x, and that exactly crosses the x-axis, the same place where my original curve does. And x minus 3, we said, was one of them. x minus 3 is our third one. So we know all three of these are the correct factors because they intersect at the same x-intercepts. So we've got x minus 2, we've got x, and we've got x minus 3. I'm going to choose to put the monomial one first. So I've got x, I'm going to drag that up in here, and I'm going to put x minus 2, I'll put it in parentheses, and I'll put x minus 3. So Desmos was pretty helpful for this one. Let's look at our third example. It says a polynomial function has a 0 at x equals 6. And it says which expression must be the factor of that polynomial. Well, remember, if you have the 0, all you need to do is take that number and say x minus that number, and you have the factor. If you want to double check on Desmos, we can do the same thing that we did in our last example. I'm going to clear all those out. And I'm going to just type x equals 6. That's the original thing that I'm looking at. And I'm looking at a, just a vertical line right there. And I think that the factor is going to be x minus 6. So if I type x minus 6, I now know that that is correct because they intersect at the same x-intercept. Cool, so I have my answer. x minus 6 is the factor. Example number 4. Which of the following describes the roots of this equation? Now, if we're going to graph this on Desmos, it does need to be solved for 0, meaning that all of the terms need to be on the same side. So if I have 9x squared equal to 6x minus 1, I need to put the terms all on the same side. I'm just going to choose to subtract 6x and add 1, and I'll put it all on this side. This will go away, this will go away, and that will be my 0. And I'll have 9x squared minus 6x plus 1 all equal to 0. That's what I need to type into Desmos. So let's get that and let's pull up Desmos again and see if I can change my window a little bit so I can see. Okay, and I'm going to again clear out the stuff and I'm going to type in 9x squared 
minus 6x plus 1. And I'm looking at this graph. And the question says, which of the following describes the roots of this equation? So it says exactly one real root, two distinct real roots. Distinct means different, two different answers. Exactly one imaginary root or two distinct different imaginary roots. Well, let's just, uh, let's see what we've got here. Maybe this is not big enough for me to be able to use my zoom in and zoom out. I can just scroll a little bit, I guess. I'm scrolling in a little bit and zooming in, zooming in, zooming in, and it looks like I'm just hitting the x-axis one time. So it looks like I just have one real root, not two different roots, and definitely not imaginary roots. So we can still graph this as long as it's all equal to zero, all the terms are on one side, and we get exactly one real root for this equation. Let's look at our final example in this tutorial which appears to be a solution of g of x equals zero. Well, this time they actually give us the graph, so we don't need Desmos. And we know that solutions are the same things as x-intercepts. So we're looking right here, and we're looking right here. And those numbers are negative 3 and 1. Well, negative 3 is right there. That's one of our solutions. Negative 1 doesn't work, 0 doesn't work, 3 doesn't work. Negative 3 is one of our solutions because there it is right there. Thanks for watching this video, and please practice all the other uh, problems in this packet. Bye-bye.